today's episode of PJ and the Beard. I am still on the never-ending ultimate field trip, and I am with my friend Brody Hutchins in his uh, guitar oasis that got dubbed earlier this week. He doesn't have a name for it, but uh, this segment we're going to talk about the amplifiers that he has. So we're going to start with probably the pinnacle of the collection, mm -hmm. some really vintage, uh, well-known yeah. One. So let's start with that one up there. That's pretty fantastic. This is a, a mid '60s Fender Deluxe reverb, and just I mean the tone out of you know three a three by four inch amp is just off the charts. You know, it's really great. Wayne, you know, Wayne loves it. It's approved too. by Wayne, it's, even it's though great. Wayne has the pointy guitar and it's matched up with that nice <laughs> gold Fender. He's not worthy. And uh, and the other cool one is a JCM 800. It, it'll melt your face and hold your keys. At the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and keep you organized while it makes you go deep. <laughs> so anyway, you know, those cool kind of gifts that you get when you love stuff like I yeah. Like his Pez dispensers. Yeah, this, yeah, this is the bonus. Them. This is for you, Gene Simmons. There you go. You know, and then an Eric Clapton guitar pick and a enclosed shrine. So my picture with Don Barnes of 38 Special, which is incredibly meaningful to me. Cue Kenny G music. Look how young I looked. Look at that pretty boy. Yeah, that's when my neck was a 13. Now it's beefed up to a 15 and a whole lot of white hair sprinkled on top. About nine chins ago for so. me. <laughs> All right, so that's, that's you know, we, we wanted to start with the creme de la creme and kind of work our way backwards, so there we go. <laughs> All right, let's start, um, you know, here in Fender World. I never, you know, never really messed with Fenders very much until the last, I don't know, however many years. Um, you know, talk about the ones that I that I always like but the you know Fender started making these reissue blackface amps Princeton reverb and deluxe reverb and you know there's circuit boards in them now and, and so on so I don't know if 50 years from now they'll still still work or still be repairable or not but uh, you know old amps are a little quirky too so I'm you know being a not a re, you know a professional musician or anything these these are a real good happy medium you know for somebody who is a novice but kind of in a um, intense sort of way you know to, to be able to hear a Princeton especially you know a, a Mike Campbell you know Tom Petty I mean this is such a great great little amp it's just you gotta have one and I use it quite a bit um, so that and then the deluxe reverb kind of its big brother you know a little more a little more wattage on them but tremendous clean sounds on that you know that I that I've never really messed with but now that I play all the time, that's why these are here. I usually sit here and just plug in. And then um, Fender came out with some reissues of the Champ, you know, and the a Deluxe or a, a Tremolux in this case. It's basically a Deluxe with Tremolo on it. And they've nailed it. I mean, those are hand-wired amps. And, you know, there's a, there's a twin also. They put, you know, marketed it with Eric Clapton's name on it. And they were incredibly unaffordable. But I... Part of the hunt, you know, Bonamassa does his guitar safari. I do that more on a working man's level, so I was able to find things, and I got that one down at Carter's, which was great. It was like brand new, and then I found this from a guy who was liquidating a music store in North Carolina. So I was really happy to. I never thought I would be able to get those, but they were quite affordable. So, right place at the right time. That's right. The Almighty sometimes wants us to have gear, so that's he. He divine arrangements on that stuff. Um, yeah, the this little Vox Pathfinder 15R, Pat turn you know lots and lots of gear and guitar. I I uh, it's Pat's fault. It's like <laughs> hey, sorry, Pat. You got to do this. Um, but these, if I knew, they don't make these anymore. But if I knew how great this little amp was back what 15 years ago or so when they came out, I'd have bought like 10 of them. You know, but it it's great all by itself. It's great to plug into a cabinet. I use this one quite a bit. At, you know, to go out and play, especially at church, because it's got a killer tremolo on it, and just for a hundred dollar amp, it was amazing. Well, I can't take total credit for that. That's a Bill Campbell thing, a friend of ours who's a producer. I went into his studio one time, and he was playing back some guitar tracks for me, and he goes, "You want to hear what that was played on?" I'm like, "Sure." And he took me over to the isolation booth and opened the door, and it was that. <laughs> and he has an AC30, uh, yeah. but he was tracking with that, so I can't take full credit, but I. Of course, immediately bought one and then immediately, you know, took Brody down the path. And I heard, too, when uh, the Next to Nothing made our, our first recording with a guy named Mark Nash, uh, I remember him telling us that Joel Hansen, 
who was another great, one of my favorite voices and killer, killer player. Uh, Mark was saying he recorded a lot of the PFR stuff with one of these things. Mm. And it's like, wow, okay. Um, yeah, let me go down here into the stuff that starts with a P. You'll notice a lot of them are, the badges are off of them because when you go into a place it looks like this, it, it's got a little more street cred than if it's got, as Pat calls it, the Barney Rubble logo yeah, on the there. The old school PV logo. old school PV logo. This stuff is built like a tank. And, you know, anywhere, this, this Classic 30, I've probably had this for, um, wow, 20, almost 25 years now. This is one of the first ones. That Pat actually picked it up at a store for me when it, it was used. And it's still, it's go-to amp. These Classic Series PV amps are incredibly underrated, you know, as far as, you know, for me, I can, I, I get compliments on how things sound and it's got a lot to do with, with I've got a amps. pile of them too. And someone's like, man, I really love that Fender amp. I'm like, yeah, sure you do. Yeah, everybody <laughs> thinks it's a Fender. You know. Yeah, no, they're great. That, so I have a, a, a smattering of them as well, and that is legitimately Brody's fault. And and then this came out a couple of years ago, this little 20-watt head. Crazy, crazy versatile. Made in China now, which makes me want to dog cuss the folks down at PV, but um, it is what it is. You know, it's a, in a, a tool. It's got an effects loop, an attenuator on it, um, a standby switch, which I really like. You know, I wish this had that on it, too. Right. But um, it's great. You can plug it into any cabinet. It was like taking your lunchbox with you. But then when the Classic Series came out, they had cabinets. So here's a 410, a 15, another 410. I've, they're kind of hard to find. And I've got another 15. So I had two stacks of those cabinets. And then got this from our dear friend. You've heard us talk about him, Chris Delaporta, the little Classic 20 that is there. Um, and jump, then years later... A couple of years later, they came out with the, the Classic 30 just in a head. So it's basically that, just a head form, and then you can take it and plug it into whatever. But I've one of my favorite sounds is this into a 410. And depending on the venues, I've actually run two of those, both as a stack. They have like a 15 and then like one of the 10-inch speakers. I love 10-inch speakers. Um, yeah, and you and I uh, kind of similar in that way, right? We stop at thirty because they make a classic fifty. I think there's yeah, a little, a little bit too much juice. Um, mm -hmm. They do have a four twelve, and they have a one twelve. Yeah. Um, so I would like to get a one twelve sometime. Yeah. Just kind of stay kind of modular, but I'd right. have to sell my other kidney for that. They're a little pricey. <laughs> right. So um, moving down the line, um, you know, I'm sort of straight away from the boutique stuff and the things that aren't your household names you know fender box marshall um pv for me and especially the old you know i like a lot of the old southern rockers and they were you know skinnered 38 special those guys all played played pvs and and a lot of the guys in that christian music you know bob hartman played them for quite a while um the guys in Milan, uh even though they didn't have them on stage they still you know used them when they recorded so there was a that was an influential thing for me at the time but Here's a uh, Three Monkeys. You know, I think Brad Whitford is one of the owners in this company, and it's they've been around for a while. Um, and this was one I just happened. This is a prototype. I you know kind of stumbled onto it. Um, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about Gordon Kennedy and the the Gibsons, but when I had first met him, he had been working with Three Monkeys on what's called the Nashville Howler. And I don't know if it. I think they released it. It I see. I've seen it in. Um, Vintage Guitar Magazine, but they made a combo and they made this head cabinet version. And this was the prototype. The serial says Gordon 02 on it, and it's a lot like a deluxe reverb, and it sort of modeled after that. But it's got a unique, unique sound to it, and I was able to, you know, get that, um, you know, from just meeting the guys. The the Three Monkeys guys were in for a Nam Summer Nam, and you know, got the you know, Ozzy, I got to meet him and, and so on. He's the guy that builds those. So this is kind of a fun, you know, a fun amp. You do really a Jeff Beck setting on it. You know, you got your treble up, mids and bass cut way back, presence up, and just volume until it breaks up. So it's very um, Jeff Beck-ish uh, voice, a lot like a matchless. You know, a lot of those have that, that on there too. So it's a great little amp. Vintage 30 speaker in there. So it's fun to, more fun to look at and Make sure the suede is all <laughs> going the right way. Um, yeah, Marshalls. They, they came out with these 
forget how many years ago, but a little five watt amp, just you know, bass, middle, treble, all volume. You know, turn it all the way up and it breaks up. And this has got a 10 inch um, Celestian in it. Not, exp I think this whole thing was you know 300 bucks or something, but it sounds great. Again, that bark of a 10 inch speaker is really amazing. And I've plugged other heads into it as well. Uh, in these PVs too, where it's got a pre, it's not all volume driven, but you can turn that up and get the gain out of it. Uh, you know, again, I love little amplifiers. This is a, a set also, it's a, an AC4, you know, a little four watt deal. It's got an attenuator, you can knock it down to one watt or a quarter of a watt. And you see that on there or not, but pretty simple tone, volume, and then here's your attenuator four watts, one watt, or a quarter of a watt. And uh, great, great recording amp just for that breakup, especially with rhythm guitars. You know, use that little head quite a bit, and uh, it, it sounds great. And it's a, a 12 inch speaker in here, I don't even know what kind it is, but the cabinet looks cool. I'm not a big fan of how that 12 inch sounds, so a lot of times I'll even run it through this 10 or some other cabinet. The rectifier cabinet sounds amazing <laughs> with this. Uh, we already talked about these guys. Um, this one's sort of tucked back here. This custom, again, you know, being a guy into amps without bragging rights. Here's a one from the 70s or so, um, custom Challenger. You don't see them very much, um, but the tuck and roll, you know, solid state amp, amazing clean, um, you know, clean sound on them. And the tremolo and reverb, and um, made out of a lot of parts the military used to use, so you never see these guys with broken handles on them. I mean, it's it lasts, and uh, just a fun, a fun clean. Just plug something into it, and it's really I, I love to record clean sounds with that. I, depending on what it is, almost prefer as much as the um, the Fender Blackface amps. But this was belonged to my dad, and, and I recall him playing it, you know, as a kid. So this has got a lot of sentimental value too. Um, this is a new one. It's uh, I forget what they call it, but the new the new Marshalls they came out with. There's the vintage based on a Super Lead, you know, the Plexi 59 SLP, 1959 SLP, where you jump the cables together, the the two channels. They made a JCM 800 and a Silver Jubilee. I think it's called a vintage something or other. And then the the classic is the JCM 800 and then the Silver Jubilee, but. 20 watts and then you can knock it down to five and it does everything that the the 100 watt versions did back in the day only i'll probably still have my hearing that those guys didn't have and then two i don't even know what speakers are in there but it kind of came with the the set so this is really you know kind of my plexi these two kind of cover that part of it that's my favorite marshall sound all the high gainy stuff i never really you know got that into so I sort of like that. That. Um, well, and you could talk just quickly about the attenuator that you have. Yeah. That you were using with that particular uh, combo uh, head and cabinet. Yeah, I I never really messed with attenuators very much. You know, I never I couldn't wrap, wrap my head around what they did. And to be honest, I always had this fear that once I realized what they did, I thought, well, it's sort of like a levy. You know, it holds everything back. But what if that <laughs> levy breaks and it's like that amp's gonna kill me? You know, and I was always uh, afraid of that. But I picked this up, just the Soldano Jet City thing. Um, you know, plugged it in, and what it does is it, you know, it take you can turn your amp up and get the break up, but it takes the volume down. But in that, you run the risk of losing a lot of tone, and it get it can get muddy. And there's a guy out in Lebanon, um, Kevin Shaw, who you know, just a mad scientist guy with anything electrical. Uh, he does a lot of work on amplifiers and so on, builds his own amplifiers, uh, sound amazing. Uh, I was out picking one up, uh, an amplifier up that he was working on, and I told him about this. And I said, yeah, it's, it's great, but it, it's a little muddy. And he goes, do you mind if I experiment on it? So I left it with him, and he put something in it. And he said, let me know if this works or not. And uh, came home, plugged it in. I'm like, well, that really doesn't take away the, like, it seemed like it was knocking off the top end. He put something in there that it's really consistent tone wise and he goes okay great now I know what to do if somebody else <laughs> you know wants to do one so it's really great if you want to take um, 
you know an amp like this and and get that real tube you know a, a tube amp that's just volume no pre or anything uh, you know preamp gain or anything to to do that so I've even put this on the black face fenders before especially if I'm like playing in church and you got to really keep it down but you want that dirt I'll run that it's uh, pretty interesting you know make it makes volume practical is what it does um, you turn in the corner here. I'm turning the corner. You can step on the other side of it if you want. All right. Uh, let me go this way. Get your good okay. side now. Here, yeah. Here's another uh, thing that's Pat's fault. The the Mesa. Um, this is a Mark IV uh, short head. You know, and back when we were playing in the you know 90s and early 2000s, we were kind of struggling with you know with sound guys and so on so every guitar player wants to be heard so this was a, a great three channel amp where if you had a solo you could hit that button and you knew somebody was going to hear you so uh, really kind of intrusive now when I think about it but the boogies a crazy great clean sound um, there it, it's it's a great it's a great thing now for me I'm overwhelmed by this. You can pull things out and sh you know shift them around and slide this and swap this. I don't wrap my head around that kind of stuff. Pat's smart enough to figure it out and and do it, and it sounds great. So I just I don't I don't mess with this one very much, except when I'm starting to think about selling it, and I'll plug <laughs> something into it and go, oh, that's what. Yeah, yeah, all right, it looks all right sitting there. But um, now let me jump to this cabinet quick. The Probably one of the most musical sounding cabinets ever. You know, I'm, I'm not a big Mesa guy, you know, with the rectifiers and, and so on, but these rectifier cabinets with the vintage 30s, there's something about the wood these are made of and, and just the, the wood's a big part of how it sounds. And uh, it's got a tightness, it's got a fullness that whatever you plug into this thing, it just, it sounds great. and. I'm never going to carry that anywhere, so sometimes I think about, you know, unloading that one too. But then I plug something into it, and it sounds amazing. Anything from a that Vox to the Marshall to then this beast, you know, this is probably my my gainiest thing. You know, when PV again PV, but little uh, little class here logo there. But who who wasn't influenced by Eddie Van Halen? You know, who didn't want to be him at some point and try to do what he was doing? And um, I, I don't remember exactly what year it was, early 90s, when, when he partnered up with PV to, to come out with you know, his amplifiers. And this is 120 watts of just <laughs> chaos. You know, it, it, you know, you turn this on and plug it in, and it's like it's on you like a spider monkey jacked up on Mountain Dew, you know? <laughs> <He> just boom! <laughs> and, <Yep. he, laughs> and it, um, it's got that game. But, the, you know, what I really love with that much power, it's actually got a great clean sound. It's like a lot yeah. of 100-watt Marshall amps. Nobody ever talks about that, but it sounds great. Um, it, you know, the first year, they, they'll call them the block letters. It's interesting to watch the collectors now sort of look back on the stuff when it was, you know, like when Pat and I were buying it, and it was just the new gear coming out. But the block letter was the first year it came out, and this one this one's pretty special because um, my dad bought it for me for my birthday. And I had I actually had sold it at one point, and then went back to the guy I sold it to and said, "Hey, are you do you want to sell that back?" And he did. He sold it back to me, and it was it was still in great shape. So I'm I'm gonna keep this one. That was a special trip to the music store on my birthday, and you know I knew um, you know my I, I knew he would he was saving up for it, and you know we went in the music store, and I can still see him there, at the guitar room in uh, Hagerstown, Maryland, and he had a couple of hundred dollar bills. You know, he sort of unfolded them and paid for it. So I knew he had been socking those away over time, and it's like, wow, what a what a sacrifice, you know. So, and he knew I loved it, and and I use this quite a bit. Um, I just I just love love the memories and and so on, and it'll it'll hurt you. So, and then the other ones, you know, the custom. This was actually part of you know this head and these cabinets. Uh, another group my dad had played in back in the day. And uh, they've all sort of disbanded and, you know, moved on and not doing much musically. But, um, you know, had given me the stuff that was his when he was in there. And then this he bought from, uh, you know, there before he passed away, he'd get together with some 
some guys and play old timey music and he played bass and the one guy had this amp I don't even know what year it is but a basement compact and he'd play his, his P bass into that while these guys sort of strum strum along and sing about the olden times and uh, yeah so it's uh, could be a wall of photographs but this wall of amplifiers is a lot of the same memories I can get by looking at at the things here and you know before I get rid of them I'll probably think more about getting a bigger room <laughs> so <laughs> that's right <laughs> but no well, you it, got this space back here that's kind of taken over oh don't kids. show that I'm only that's... showing that because there's your room for expansion you oh. just push all that stuff out the room no I don't yeah. show that that's, I'm not showing uh, it I just... I'm pointed right at it but I'm not showing yeah, it okay and um <laughs> that's what happens when you have kids <laughs> No, it's just that's that's all me. But um, yeah, just any any kind of th you. I've got I got a lot of the bases covered. That's you it. know, practical bases anyway. And uh, a few things I'm still kind of on the hunt for, and a few things I'll probably you know swap out at some point. But I'm this. I, th there's not a lot of things I can't can't do even if I just want to noodle around. Now, the irony of it is um, when I go out and play. It's if I had to run out of the place, you know, if it were on fire or something, um, that PV, you know, one of the, the, the closest PV classic thing, and then probably the, you know, that 335, it seems like I, I play that more than anything else, or the, and my Telecaster, you know, the, just right now for what I'm doing, which is primarily stuff at church, you know, a Tele and a 335, and that and I get everything that I want so I try to change it up sometimes and push myself because I don't want to get lazy with with gear either so sometimes to to get something and force it to work just to stretch you is, is a good thing I did if I hadn't done that I never would have probably gotten so geeked out over the black face fenders but I'll take the those Princeton that especially that Princeton reverb and maybe put I'm not a pedal guy but I'll, I'll grab some kind of dirt pedal and, and put in front of it and that reverb and that that tremolo on it you know just makes for a an inspiring thing and it works really great there's a lot of you know articulation and in, in doing that especially you know playing a church and it's easy to walk in with one amp in one hand and whatever I need tucked in the back and a, and a guitar so yeah, yeah that's so. cool man that's that's uh so it's quite a collection, like you said. You kind of covered the basics. You were brave enough to branch out to boutique. You've got super high watt. You've got a quarter of a watt. That's not a watt of power. <laughs> but uh, I've enjoyed uh, hanging out and seeing some of the things that uh, I've had on stage sharing with you at times, and some new things. And it's been a great, uh, as they say here in uh, Nash Vegas, a great hang. Is any of this stuff still yours? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll I'll tell you when I turn the camera. Off. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we had we had a lot of stuff commingled for so long that everything to the left of the fenders is all mine. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, if you like what you see, even if you don't, what the heck, subscribe. We've got children to feed. Hit the notification so you know when our next uh, episodes are come out. And as proven once again here in the uh, Guitar Oasis. Uh, no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear. Peace out from this place. <laughs>